My wife had asked me for a small bookcase to keep on her bedside table. She loves books and she wanted something to keep her favorite books close. I had some cherry left over from a commissioned project and I thought it would be perfect for this. I don't film every woodworking project that I build, but I thought this one would be a perfect project for a beginning woodworker. A bookcase is a great project to start out with. It's full of straight lines, parallel rips, and right angles. And I've also included some rabbit and dado joints in this one to give a little bit of woodworking joinery to the project. I'm starting out by getting all of my pieces milled down to size. After getting rough lengths, I like to joint one edge and then rip the other edge parallel on the table saw. I follow that up by flattening one face on the jointer and getting the other face parallel with the planer. If you don't have a jointer or a planer, it's not a problem. Just about any lumber can be purchased from a hardwood dealer that has already been surfaced on both sides. And here's the top and bottom, both sides and both shelves for the bookcase after they've been dimensioned. I should note that I have left a few of the boards wider than what I actually need and I'll explain that later when I trim them. But here I am cutting to the exact final dimension that is going to be needed. I usually like to select the best grain pattern for the most visible sides of any project. These are the sides and here I'm going to use a ruler to lay it out for exactly where I want to have the dados cut. I like to transfer those layout lines around to the side so that I can see how they line up with the dado blade in my table saw. I'm setting the depth on my dado blade to exactly a quarter of an inch. And just like that, the first two dados are cut. And now it's time for a test fit. If you can see here, my board is actually a few thousandths of an inch too wide to fit nicely into the dado. If a measurement is really close like that, it's very easy to take the thickness down with a sander just a little bit. And a second test fit ensures that I have the right thickness. Everyone should take the time to dry fit their projects together. This can save you a lot of headache later. Rather than trying to figure out a bunch of complicated measurements to determine the exact size and location of my dados for the top and the bottom, I like to do a pre-assembly, set the shelf on top, and then mark where they're actually going to go. Even if I have done an extensive CAD drawing of the project and I know where the measurements should be, I'll still build it like this.
And just like that, the last dados are done. Earlier I had mentioned my sides are a little bit wide. Usually if I have the stock, I go ahead and let them be wide until after the dados are cut. Sometimes I get a bit of chip out, and then I can trim them down to the final width, and they look better. Here I've got a rabbiting bit set up in my router table. This rabbit will allow the plywood back to be recessed into the bookcase. You might notice how I stopped short of the ends so the rabbit doesn't show through the sides. This isn't a problem for the side boards because they don't go all the way through to the top and the bottom so their rabbits can't show. Now this could very easily have been cut with the dado blade on the saw. I just decided to use a different tool to do it. For the top and the bottom boards of the bookcase, I wanted a chamfer on the sides to give it a little more decorative look. It's interesting to notice that if you have a new, clean, sharp blade, there are no burn marks after the cut. I obviously need to clean and sharpen my table saw blade. Those fancy pencil lines at the end aren't really showing me a measured location where to cut to, they're just reminding me how to angle my blade. Now it's time to sand the whole project. I have to start with sanding off all those ugly burn marks. Finally, one of the fun steps in a project for me. I get to dry fit the whole thing together and kind of get a preview of what it's going to look like. At this stage, you can also see why I cut all those dados and rabbits where I did. And now you can see the rabbit all the way around that's going to hold the recessed plywood back. I didn't realize how messy my workshop was in the background until I got to this scene here. I had a few small pieces of quarter inch cherry plywood also left over from that last commissioned project. You might notice something funny here and that is the grain is going to be running from side to side. Normally on bookcases I like to run the grain vertically but this was really the only sized piece of plywood that I had and I figured my wife is going to keep it full of books anyway so maybe it would be alright. Time for the glue up. If you've seen any of my other videos, you might have noticed that I'm sort of a believer in the fact that there's no such thing as too much glue. I like to put it on thick. I like to spread it to every square millimeter of surface on both sides of the material 
and then put the pieces together. I guess for me, I don't really mind cleaning the excess squeeze out. What I'm more concerned about is perhaps having missed an area and my glue bond maybe not as strong as it could be. It was right about here when I think I realized that mallet probably wasn't going to do the trick. Now that I have glue in the joints, I'm realizing perhaps they were just a little bit tight. It's important to stop at various intervals and get all of the squeeze out cleaned up before you move on so that the glue doesn't have a chance to dry. If you're not getting some glue squeeze out, you haven't put enough glue. Clamps, clamps, and more clamps. You can never have too many clamps. We're looking for squeeze out and success. We did good. quarter inch cherry plywood in the back actually has an MDF core and I don't expect to see much movement in this piece therefore I'm going to glue it in as well as put a few pin nails. Here I'm shooting in a few pin nails. These pin nails don't have a head on them and what they're really doing is acting like a clamp until the glue has a chance to cure. Something interesting I wanted to show you about getting the glue squeeze out, cleaned up from inside of the corners of a project. I take a random piece of wood, sharpen it to a point on a sander, and then I can wrap it around a wet paper towel and very easily get all of the glue out of the inside edges and even the very corner of any project with this tool. In the background there is my 12 year old daughter who loves photobombing these videos. The grain always gets raised a little bit when you clean up with water. So I give the entire project a hand sanding down to about 220 grit.
One of my favorite finishes is lacquer. I'm particularly fond of lacquer made by a company called Deft, D-E-F-T. It's a very easy to apply product and gives a beautiful finish. If I have a big project, I use my spray gun hooked up to my compressor. But if I have a small project like this, it's very easy to just use the cans. Lacquer gives a deep, rich, beautiful tone to the wood. One thing to keep in mind with lacquer though, no matter whether you do it indoors or out, you must wear a respirator. It's far too dangerous to apply this without a respirator. I sand lightly by hand with 600 grit sandpaper between coats of lacquer. After the final coat, I'll give it a very light hand sanding with 1000 grit and then use a tack cloth to completely wipe off the project. And this beautiful looking cherry has nothing on it but a clear lacquer finish. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please consider subscribing to my channel. We put out new videos every few days.